Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. Com. In this video, we'll demonstrate the OAuth client credentials authorization flow for Oracle REST data services. AUDS gives us a number of options for web service authentication and authorization. OAuth is one of those options, and client credentials is one of the supported OAuth flows available. The client credentials flow is most suitable for server-to-server -server communication where the calling client is outside your company, so you want something more secure than first-party authentication, like basic authentication. I'll be creating an auto REST web service to demonstrate the authorization setup. I'm going to race through that bit, so you might want to watch one of the previous videos that covers that functionality. We create a test user called test user one and grant it the create session and create table privileges. We connect to the new user and create the EMP table. We insert the usual data and now we're ready to start the web service configuration. We enable ORDS for the test user one schema and assign the base path of HR. This is a schema alias used in the web service URLs, which lets ORDS know it's dealing with objects in the test user one schema. We auto REST enable the EMP table, giving it an alias of employees. This automatically generates a number of RESTful web services, including one to retrieve employee information for a specific employee. This is what we'll use for our testing. Before we start, let's test the web service. When testing security, I find it easier to see what's going on if I do it from the command line using the curl command. We are using a self-signed certificate, so the minus K option stops curl complaining about the weak certificate. When we run the command, we see a JSON document returned containing the employee information. Ors uses roles and privileges to protect services, but these are nothing to do with the database roles and privileges. We use the create role procedure in the Ords package to create a new role called emprole. The user ORDS roles view allows us to display information about existing roles. The define privilege procedure is one of the ways we can create a privilege. In this example, we create a new privilege called empprev and associate it to the role we just created. In the same command, we're also associating the new privilege with a specific URL pattern. This means anyone accessing a URL that contains a match for this pattern will need the empriv privilege to run it. Notice using this method we can associate multiple roles and patterns in a single step by adding them into the roles and patterns arrays. The user ORDS privileges view displays information about privileges. The user ORDS privilege roles view displays the relationship between privileges and roles. And the user ORDS privilege mappings view displays the relationship between privileges and patterns. If we try to access the web service now, we get a HTTP 401 unauthorized return code. This call produces a lot of HTML output, so I've used the minus I flag to display the header information, and I'm using grep to only pull out the status. The steps so far are common to many of the authentication methods supported by ORDS. Now comes the bit that's specific to OAuth client credentials. We've created a new client with the create client procedure. This is part of the OAuth package. We've given it the name emp client, but you would probably give it a name that represents the external company calling this service. We set the grant type to client credentials, and we give it a list of privileges this client is set up for. The user ords clients view displays information about the client, including the client ID and client secret we will use for authorization. The user ords client privileges view shows us the relationship between clients and privileges. We use the grant client role procedure to grant the emp role we created earlier to our new client. The user ords client roles view displays the relationship between clients and roles. Before we can use the web service, we have to get a token. We do this using a URL to the schema alias with OAuth and token appended to it. We're passing the user credentials made up of the client ID and client secret associated with the client we just created. These are separated by a colon. 
the data parameter is set to grant type equals client credentials. When we run this, we get an access token returned of type bearer. Now we can make a call to the web service. We include a header containing the bearer token for authorization. When we run this, we get the output we expect from the web service. The setup might look a bit tricky, but once you've run through it a couple of times, it's pretty simple. Management of the token is normally handled by the client tool or driver, so it's not complicated to use. I just think it's worth seeing what happens under the hood, so you can see it's not as simple as basic authentication. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.